Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'd like to note for the record our junior councilman is absent tonight. He's in Europe right now, having more fun than us. <laughs> At this time, we'll have personal appeals part one. If you have a personal appeal, please approach the podium, state your name and where you're from, and you have five minutes for your appeal. Hi. Uh, my name is Reverend Dr. Paul Knappenberger. I'm the pastor at St. John's United Church of Christ. I sent you a letter to the Borough Council. I understand you received it a couple days ago. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about is church usage. Uh, the 21st century has been hard on all churches. Most of the churches in the Borough of Mayus have been struggling financially, and St. John's is included in that. So we've been trying to be creative, thinking outside the box, uh, figuring out ways to, um, to use our facility to bring income in for the congregation. One of the things we've had in our church for about the last four years is a theater group. And they were practicing in our church for a number of years. And they would have some kind of, you know, like some, uh, we call them sanctuary serenades where they'd put on a program. Well, last December, they asked if they could put on their play at our in, in our fellowship hall downstairs. And I thought it was a wonderful idea. It was a way to bring arts into the community, and it was a way to bring some income into the congregation. I was unaware that our congregation, or where our church was, was zoned uh, that we weren't allowed to have a, um, a theater in our, con in our basement of our church. And somebody made a report, and it was discussed at zoning, and zoning turned it down. Um, so I'm trying to consider ways of being creative to um, continue to use our church facility, use our space. And I met with uh, Mr. Pepe, and he was very helpful. And we, um, I was hoping that we could maybe change the zoning ordinance that churches, not just St. John's United Church of Christ, but all the churches in the borough could have some more flexibility of how they use their space. Um, and I'd like to be able to see us be able to, you know, we could do things like have plays in the church and have other musical programs because there's not a lot of arts besides events that happen in a high school in the community. And when we, when we had our play in December uh, that we weren't supposed to have, it brought about 500, four to 500 people into the community. And when people go to theater, they go to dinners, they go to the microbreweries, they go to our stores, they support our community. So we were bringing in about five, four to 500 people, maybe some shows 800 people that will be helping to boost the economy of Emmaus. And it would be really helping boost St. John's ministry and mission. But if we allowed churches to have some rights and flexibility in zoning, it could really help all of our congregations in the borough of Emmaus. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Paul, we received your letter in communications. I'm going to bring it up, but it's, it's going to be assigned to a committee and discussed at committee level. Thank you very so, much. So um, maybe we can notify you where, when, that, when that will be discussed. And you, you're, it's a public meeting. You're able to attend that also. I'd like to attend that. OK. So we'll let you know when that is. OK. All right. Anybody have a question for him? Thank you. Thank you. No. Um, yeah, I think well, uh, that's coming up here in a few minutes. So if you stick around, you, you'll find out what committee it's going to go to. Okay. Okay. During a uh, correspondence? Yeah. 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 Here it's probably just about in a five couple minutes. minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else with the public appeal? All right. Hearing none. Community minute. Does anyone have anything to bring forward? I just, I How about a report on Earth Day? Yes, Earth Day. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was excellent. We had a lot of volunteers show up for the for the cleanup side of the the uh, the program. We also had uh, three yeah three full truckloads of electronics dropped off. So that was quite a lot of televisions and air conditioners. And the uh, the paper shredding event was. Uh, was very well received. Um, we probably filled three quarters of the truck with shredded paper. A lot, a lot of tax documents came through there. That's what sure. parts of town did we attack this year as far as cleanup? I mean, it's the standard. I mean, the basic okay. ones that they had. The railroad the banks. Railroads, the Weiss. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. Great. So, yep. Anybody Thank else? Thank you to the EAC. Um, I know 
myself, um, Madam Mayor, a um, couple new businesses had ribbon cuttings this weekend. Sorry. Um, so it was nice. I got to attend one of them at the uh, the mix, which is uh, a place that um, people can go and learn to um, mix alcohol and become a bartender in um, mixology. It's uh, at the other end of town, um, down in the um, strip mall. Strip mall. Thank you. And then the second one, I don't know. Did you attend that? I did. That that CBD. Was Maybe you your CBD that. store, which is at 333 Main Street right on the triangle. It's um, hemp-based products that they sell. It's quite interesting. You'll learn a lot if you go in and just talk to the individuals there. And uh, Councilwoman McManaman also attended that along with uh, Councilman Schiffstead. So it's nice to see some new businesses in town. They had the river cuttings. If you get a moment, um, check out the businesses. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Uh, the Kiwanis Club uh, Easter egg hunt is on Saturday at 1 o'clock at Community Park. That's usually a well-attended event. Let's hope the weather holds out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to special presentations. At this time, we'll have a swearing-in of our part-time officers, uh, Troy Leonard, I'd like to call you forward, and Justin Williams, along with Madam Mayor. And Chief Palmer. And Chief Palmer. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States? Do you solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States? And the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? And the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic? Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same? That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will uphold, obey, and enforce the laws with fairness? And I will uphold, obey, and enforce the law with fairness. Integrity and impartiality. Integrity and impartiality. That I take this oath, ob this obligation freely. Excuse me. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office with fidelity as a patrolman with the Mass Police Department. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office with fidelity as a patrolman of the Amaze Police Department. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a good ceremony. Yeah. Right, here's our choice. On all three. Chief Howard. Do we need a pen? Shane, can you pass a pen down, please? Sure. Yeah, I know. 
So they're having a town hall meeting with Bernie Sanders at Steel Stacks, and it came out at 6.30, and I was taking a shower, and I heard Paul yelling at the TV. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, he's talking about the rich, and she was like, hey, you know. <laughs> I think that's your pen? Yes. Thank you. It was just what he was saying about millionaires. One for you? Right, that's what she was saying. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. How are you going? Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Nice. That's okay. I saw it before I came here. It started at 6.30. Seriously, we just fixed it. Come on. We were just upstairs. Yeah, we're yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just holding Parking. it back here. And security. I can't lean back. All right, one more time. Let's have a nice round of applause hey. for this. You're all more than welcome to stay and watch the rest of the meeting, or you can go somewhere else and celebrate. <laughs> All right, moving on with the agenda, we have a reading of the minutes. We have the council meeting minutes from April 1st of this year. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes? Meeting. Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilman Dufresne. Any questions or discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. We have no decisions on bids tonight. Under communications, we received a letter from Barbara Graff requesting a reappointment to the Recreation and Entertainment Commission uh, with the term, her term expires May 1st of 2019. Um, that's under the agenda of what? We could just take care of it. We'll do it now. Is that under your committee? Yeah, I think. Uh, oh yeah, under no, Recreation under Parks, Parks, and Parks, and Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. I'm just looking for the, uh, when the term, it's a three year term and expires uh, May 1st of 2020. So would somebody like to make that motion? 22. 22, uh, 22 sorry. Uh, Councilman Shipsta? I'll make that motion. Second by Councilman Anders. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. All right. We received a letter from Kate Heflin from Girl Scouts South Mountain Trail Service Unit requesting a pavilion fee waiver. Um, we received a long memorandum from our solicitor saying what the borough can and cannot do as far as what would be considered a donation and uh, waiving a pavilion fee is one of those. So we will um, inform them of that. But tonight we are also addressing a reduced fee for um, <coughs> certain groups, I guess. Yeah, Ms. Bumgarner's committee will uh, we'll be bringing some information forward for you to discuss this evening. So we'll address it then. Uh, we received a letter from David Biles, the Shelter House Society, with regarding liability coverage, and that will go to General Administration. Yeah. And then we received a, a letter from Reverend Knappenberger from St. John's United Church of Christ, who was here earlier uh, with regarding zoning ordinance change. We will refer that to uh, Health, Sanitation, and Codes Committee. Okay, that's on the 24th. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Mr. Shipps, I will not be there at, at that meeting. Okay. Um, so just, you know, take some notes. I, I had informed Reverend Knappenberger that I probably won't be able to make it to that, but okay. you can at least get the conversation started. And if you need me to start anything, just let me yeah, know. Yeah, I'll send you an email. I just need an outline. So, okay. Pastor Paul, that meeting is April 24th yep. at 4.30 p.m. right here, and they'll be sitting at this table right here. Great, thank you. Yep. You're welcome. All right, and then we received a letter from Kathy Mincer from the Emmaus Recreation and Entertainment Commission requesting uh, tunes at twilight on the Triangle event June 28th. It's a 
going to go to Parks and Rec, but they meet the first week in May. So for the sake of allowing them to get started, uh, I think we should just make a motion <coughs> to approve the event, but the details be worked out at the committee <coughs> level so, so that they know the event is actually approved. Um, so would somebody like to make a motion to approve the event, and then the rest will be discussed at the committee level? <clears throat> Councilman Anders, seconded by Councilman Shipstead. Discussion. So typically I know with council, if there is alcohol, which I see alcohol being served, that will be something I believe the committee will discuss and have right. ample time to provide for them. And what I would, I would do is find out if it's going to be on borough property or private property. If it's private property, uh, Shane, if I'm correct, we have nothing to do with it. If it's on borough property, then it's a different issue. Well, so, so, but to that end, though, um, we have made a very strict policy that none of our borough-owned uh, organizations, which the commission is, uh, have the authority to uh, sponsor any sales of alcohol. So it would definitely, and I see in there that they're trying to partner with the Main Street Partners. Right. So if the sale is going through the Main Street Partners, um, that that is something that you guys have, have traditionally allowed. I know that that's how... You know, when we nice have the um, uh, the event in February, right. um, the Main Street Partners sponsor that piece of the event. Um, but right. as long as it's the Main Street Partners and not our organization, then we can we can deal with it. So those are the details you're going to discuss. I just wanted to make sure that was yep. Since and that, that was on that third page. I did see that Triple Sun and uh, I think it was Gary. I think it was Funk. 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 Excuse me. Yeah. So. Yes. Uh, any other discussion, there, Councilman There's Dufresne? no issues with the no parking on Main Street from 4th Street, I would assume. Well, well, they would have to. We could either vote or the mayor could do it. Either or. So. Well, and I think that's something that the committee can get the details on. I, I think the reason that, that I would ask for the date to be approved is simply because they're going to want to start marketing this thing. And for them to have to wait until... Um, I, I don't think you would be able to vote on this at the council level until, uh, yeah. Um, second meeting second in May. Second meeting in May. Right. You're at May 20th already. So that only gives them a month. Do we want to approve the times also? Yeah, I got a question. It says till 10 o'clock. What's our, what's what? the policy for music? Well, I would just, right now, I would just go with the date and let, and let the committee Okay. Because the committee may, may decide they need to have a special meeting because I think there's a lot that's going to need to be worked out here. But uh, I would just approve the date so that they can at least market the, the date of the event um, if they so choose. And, and then let the committee work out the rest of the details and come back to you af after they're kind of figured out. All right. Is everyone all right with that? Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. All right, I received two letters on my desk tonight. First one from Kathy Mincer asking for reappointment. Um, her term, would, if she gets reappointed, would be May 1st of 2022. So would somebody like to make that motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Uh, motion by Councilwoman McManaman and seconded by Councilwoman Baumgartner. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, those opposed say no. All right, there's seven ayes. And I also received a letter from a Gene Miller with regarding to a, uh, it's an alley behind his house at 665 Ridge Street. It's stones and it's in bad shape. And he would like the borough to take a look at it and maybe pave it or do some improvement. So I will refer this to Public Works. Thank you. Did you receive the letter, by the way? I do have it. Okay. I, it's on I their desks. It. Yeah, okay. it's on my desk. Anybody else have a communication to bring forward? Hearing none, there's no borough engineer's report. Solicitor's report. Uh, I have no report tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Unfinished business part one. We have ordinance 1188, an ordinance of the borough of Emmaus, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, amending chapter 20, solid waste of the borough of Emmaus, consolidated co code of ordinances, providing for regulations regarding the disposal of refuse and recycling. We had our first reading on March 18th, and this is our second reading. So would somebody like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 1188? Councilman Shipsta, seconded by Councilman Hart. Questions or discussion? 
I think the, the only thing we really made a change on was the size of the containers that you could put out, and everything else, I believe, remained the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. So, with that being said, it's a roll call vote. Councilwoman McManaman? Aye. Councilman Schupsta? Aye. Councilman Anders? Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner? Aye. Councilman Dufresne? Aye. Councilman Hart? Aye. Councilman <clears throat> Labenberg? Aye. There are seven ayes. We have ordinance 1189, an ordinance repealing sections 351 through 356 of Chapter 1 of the codified ordinances involving the Civil Service Commission rules and regulations and adopting amended rules and regulations. Also, uh, we had the first reading also on March 18th, and this is our second reading. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 1189? Councilman Dufresne, <coughs> second by Councilman Hart. Questions or discussion on this? These were all improvements that we made from going through the process the first time, realizing that we, we needed these improvements, and they made the improvements, and that's why we're here. So, all right, roll call vote. Councilwoman uh, McManaman? Aye. Councilman Schupsta? Aye. Councilman Anders? Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner? Aye. Councilman Dufresne? Aye. Councilman Hart? Aye. Councilman Leidenberg? Aye. There are seven ayes. We have no new business. Unfinished business part two, we have nothing. Does anybody have anything to bring forward? An item that's not on the agenda. Hearing none, Mayor's report. Thank you. Uh, I have nothing to actually report, but I do have a proclamation to read this evening for Arbor Day. It's Proclamation 2019-451 Arbor Day. Whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas these trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, beautify our community, and trees are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas trees must be properly planted and maintained to provide long-term community and environmental benefits, and whereas Arbor Day plantings and celebrations improve neighborhoods and create a sense of place. And whereas each year, on the last Friday of April, you must play special tribute to trees and all natural resources and benefits they provide, and dedicate themselves to the continued vitality of our forests. Now, therefore, I, Leanne Gilbert, Mayor of the Borough of Emmaus, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2019 as Arbor Day in the Borough of Emmaus, and urge all citizens to support the planting of trees and to promote the well-being of this and future generations. Done the 15th day of April, 2019, at Emmaus, Pennsylvania. Progress. Thank you, Mayor. Committee reports. Public Works Committee, Chairman Anders. Uh, yes, thank you. We have um, some items for official action. Um, Shane, just want to confirm, would these be read in separate? Yes. Okay. So to fill everyone in, we had interviews for full-time Public <coughs> Works employees. Um, this process has been taking several months. Um, initially, we, we received over 70 applications, which is phenomenal. Uh, Shane and John interviewed. and. Um, narrowed that down to six candidates um, after nearly 30 hours of interviews. So it was quite extensive. And um, what we are, the committee is recommending after interviewing them ourselves, um, we have several employees that we would like to um, recommend for hiring. Shane, is there any contingencies I have to say? Um, completion of the background, although they're just about completed okay. and um, Successful probation. Okay. Not completion. Um, completion of the the background check and um, a 90-day probationary period. So the first one that the committee is recommending um, for hiring is James Yochum. I think it's Yochum. Yeah, I think it's Yochum. Yochum. Is there anything else that needs to be said for that, Shane? Okay. Um, so I'll put that one in the form of a motion. All right. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Councilwoman McManaman, questions or discussion? Um, I just want to say during the interview, all six candidates were were great candidates, and any one of them would do a great job in the borough. So uh, we're actually quite excited because there's a lot of talent coming to this borough, and um, it's just exciting to see. So and and most of them are fairly young. Um, some of them have military experiences. It's very very exciting to see some new blood coming here and yeah um, get I mean, some new energy in the in we've, the department. We've, we've had we 
We were very impressed with the talent pool that we, we interviewed from um, uh, from top to bottom, and uh, we really couldn't go wrong. Mr. Yoakum, uh, you see in the memorandum his qualifications. And <laughs> the question is, what's he missing? Because I, I don't see anything there, you know. Um, so uh, we're very excited uh, about Mr. Yoakum, uh, as well as the others, and we'll get into the other stuff here in a few yep. minutes. But. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. So the second um, person um, that we will be hiring, and we are doing two initially, and then um, we have a list of additional um, hires for the remainder of the year to replace individuals as the positions open. But the second one that we have is uh, Mr. Jeffrey Kretz of Green Lane, PA. And um, as you can see in his, uh, his <coughs> brief um, resume there, he is, um, has much background for us. So I would like to put that in the form of a motion. Uh, Jeffrey Kretz for hiring contingent upon a 90-day probation and fully passing the background check. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Councilwoman McManaman. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. And then Shane, is there, there, that's all for official action, correct? Hire, hiring list. Oh, yes. Um, so we have four other candidates, and in the order that they are would be where they would be considered for future positions. Um, and I'd like to recommend to council to establish a hiring list um, on, the above, on the individuals. Excuse me. Um, the first being Kyle Chrisman, second, Matthias Cruz, third, Matthew Bockert, and the fourth, Robert Simmons. There's a motion on our floor. Is there a second? Councilwoman McManaman. Uh, just so everyone understands, we are um, anticipating a few more retirements from Public Works, at least two, if not three, in addition to the two that we're having that we ha replaced tonight. tonight. And uh, instead of bringing a whole group back and re-interviewing for those positions, we decided to make a list. So when those positions become available, we will go down the list. If the person is available and they accept it, that will be the person that gets the job. If not, we'll move to the second person because they're all very qualified people that we could use. So, so I'm, I'm pretty sure this is an obvious answer, but should we find out something in the next four months about one? We need to skip over them on the list, correct? This doesn't require us to. No, we still have flexibility. We always have flexibility. Down, right? The Correct. truth of the matter is, you, yes, and that's a very good question because Shane and I discussed it today. Uh, from a legal standpoint, you can hire anyone at any time. This is a, you might call it a preliminary or a pre-reviewed list, but I mean, if you want to hire Joe Smith instead of the people on the list, you have that right. But uh, this gives you a pre-interview I would call it a pre-interview certification, okay. but it is no guarantee of employment. I guess a good example of that would be, and I don't see this happening, but suppose somebody we have no idea would be leaving our department, not necessarily for retirement, but just leaving, and that would leave a hole in our department. Maybe somebody not on that list would fill that, that hole, or somebody lower on the list would fill that hole better than somebody higher on the list. So we wouldn't necessarily have to go in that order then. No, but the goal is is because we vetted these Understood. people and we interviewed Understood. heavily, uh, there is a solid chance that all four of these openings come this year. But if we were to find something out in the next four months about one more on the list, we could skip them. If well, absolutely. We well, or, or if a background comes right. up that's, that's, what I would that's, not, that's not ideal, uh, then we move, move down the list. What, what the goal is is we don't go through this entire thing again. Which makes sense not to go through it again. I agree. It is a long, painful process for those of us that have to participate in it. The, the one thing I, I do want to add um, is that we are losing some very highly skilled individuals who have been here for quite some years, um, 15, 20, I think even 30 years, correct me if I'm wrong, Shane. Yep. Um, so this is, um, it's tough when you bring in a new personnel mm -hmm. and you want to have the right fit. And I do believe the committee... Um, we chose some very, very strong individuals who will help our department go into the future and have the skill sets to do um, 
anything we need here in the town and be able to handle it in-house. I agree. Terry, did you want to say anything? Um, I, I think it's impressive that all of these individuals showed leadership as well, and they, they aspire to be something different in their, in, within public works. Um, but each one of them was, was a very good interview, and I was very impressed by all of them. Yeah, the the work, the workers that we're losing, you, you don't only, you, you don't um, not only lose their talent, but you lose their knowledge of the va of the all the little nooks and crannies in the borough and all the little things they know, because it, it takes a lot of time to learn that. And these guys will learn the same thing, but it's going to take some time. So, with that all being said, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes, so the list is approved. And our next committee meeting is May 8th at 4 p.m. Progress. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Chairman Dufresne. There's <clears throat> nothing to report for official action. Our next meeting is, my eyes has locked up. Somebody help me. May 8th. Did I? You skipped a few. So Is that why you were startled? <laughs> 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 I was waiting for you to see this. I didn't want to throw you on the bus, but Shane did. What is that? Civility? All right, so you report progress. We'll, we'll go back. Now we're going back. <laughs> Paying attention anyway. <laughs> Health, sanitation, and codes. Oh, I'm up. Thank you. Chairman Shipstaff. <laughs> all right, well, we all, took care All this of to say progress, right? That was awesome. Yeah, no, I, no, I want to thank the committee for working. Uh, uh, very hard on on the ordinance that we just passed. Uh, we've been working on that for quite a long time now. Uh, I also want to thank uh, John DeShala and uh, Shane uh, Pepe for uh, the two recycling uh, uh, containers. The containers that are over on the triangle. Uh, we were looking to get those in for the uh, farmers market, that so nice. that's uh, that's very nice that we have them on the triangle. Um, the also that we, uh, I'm going to try and get a report from the Earth Day event. I'll try to get the, the oh, tonnage the, the and everything that yeah. we got from that. From, I'll send an email to her tomorrow. <coughs> so uh, our next meeting is scheduled for April 24th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, progress. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Committee, Chairwoman Baumgartner. Uh, we have one item for action, but before we uh, put that in the form of a motion, we just wanted to provide a little background. So considering the solicitor's memo regarding donations and providing some parameters on um, what we need to do going forward and what we've done in the past, one thing that we have done is waived pavilion fees, and we've just noticed that, that that's something that we need to adjust. And so we talked about offering um, a separate fee schedule for those organizations that um, are nonprofits. And in committee, we discuss specifically all the pavilions um, except the arts pavilion. And we had a, a determination about the rest of the pavilions, but considering that we had a request this evening from Ms. Heflin um, specifically about the arts pavilion, we thought we might want to entertain that and discuss it and decide if there should be um, an adjustment to the fee for that specific pavilion because that was something that was not addressed at committee. Yeah, and... and um one of the things that, that they discussed at the committee is, um, you know, the emphasis on uh, adjusting for nonprofit for organizations that operate and do business within the borough of Emmaus. Not that we're, because you're a nonprofit 30 miles down the road. So uh, as, as we make the motion, we just need to consider, consider that in the motion. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, should, should I spe specify what we address for the other? or what we discussed for the other pavilions. Yeah, and maybe just have the debate on the on the arts pavilion, too. Okay. So is there a suggested price for the, uh, a rental price for the uh, arts pavilion, a range that you came up with, and we can debate it? So for, for the other pavilions, we had um, made a motion out of committee to uh, set it at $15 for a weekday fee for those organizations that would qualify for it. And then um, outside that, we actually had a meeting just before this, um, uh, to discuss something else, and so we raised that question during our discussion about the arts pavilion specifically and what we might uh, suggest for that. And in general, um, people felt comfortable with forty dollars. So, uh, generally speaking, it's two seventy-five as the regular fee. And so, for these organizations that are do 
do work in Emmaus and are nonprofits, um, we were suggesting forty dollars as a fee to cover. That's the number I was thinking. So yeah. that's good. And we so, looked at we also looked at Miss Baumgartner has the the, the numbers on right. the number of, of uh, pavilion rentals for the arts pavilion that were rented during the week, uh, and how many would have been waived over the past several years. So that way it gives you a feel of of how many we're actually talking about. So. Uh, in 2016, for Monday through Friday, uh, Friday rentals of the Art Pavilion, there were uh, it was rented nine times at full price. Five um, would have been waived. 2017-13 rented at full price. Three uh, waived. 2018-13 rented. Four waived. So that gives you a general idea of how many would have um, this special pricing if we were to. And do we know how many Sorry. Arts Pavilion or not? No, no, that was that is the Arts Pavilion. Yes. Oh, that's, that's the Arts Pavilion. Yeah. During okay. the week. Again, okay. that was, that was on weekdays. Yeah. All right, so do you want to make a motion to have a, a $15 fee for regular pavilions Monday through Friday for nonprofits that are based in the borough <clears throat> and $40 for the Arts Pavilion? Is that what you're... We can. So the, the um, $40 for the Arts Pavilion we didn't necessarily recommend from committee, so I guess that's just... So I'm just asking if you want to place that in a form of motion, we can debate it then. Okay, sure. So I'll put that in a form of a motion for $15... Um, Fee for nonprofit organizations that do work in Emmaus. Is that how you'd phrase work that? Work in Emmaus or based in Emmaus? Emmaus. 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 Uh, that it would be nonprofit organizations that uh, are related to and uh, focus their work in the borough. Okay. What he so said. for nonprofit organizations <laughs> related to focus, who focus their work in the borough, um, it would be a fifteen dollar fee for all pavilions except the Arts Pavilion for Monday through Friday rentals. And then for the Arts Pavilion, we're proposing $40 fee. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Friday. Councilman Shupsta. Discussion. Is everyone all right with those fees? I think they're very reasonable. We're, we're not giving it away for free, but at the same time, we're, we're charging minimal. So that will cover our staff costs probably for removing trash and cleaning up. So, all right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Um, other than that, there are committee notes attached. Um, our next meeting is May 7th at 4.30 progress. Thank you. General Administration Committee, that's myself. We have resolution 2019-16 for a grant. And it's uh, a resolution approving the application to Lehigh County and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for Community Development Block Grant Funds. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve that? Councilman Dufresne, seconded by Councilman Anders. Questions or discussion? This is a yearly, uh, a yearly grant we get from the county. So uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Um, you see the committee meeting notes, three page, actually one page. Uh, oh, uh, just to mention. Our last committee meeting, we, we um, spent two hours interviewing uh, four law firms, and after the inter ha completing the interviews, the committee decided to not uh, make any changes. So just informing you that we're going to remain with <clears throat> Jeff and company. Thank you. I hope you don't use the word stuck with. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? I was he, almost <laughs> he, paused. he paused. That's funny. Uh, progress. <laughs> Our next meeting's April 25th here in Council Chambers at 9 o'clock. Budget and Finance Committee. Chairman Hart. Thank you, Mr. President. There were two meetings in the month of, uh, during this past month. Uh, let's deal with the one that occurred immediately preceding Council. And that dealt with uh, resolution 2019-15 uh, payment of the bills for the first half of the month. I'd offer that in the form of a motion. So motion by Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilman Dufresne. Questions on the bill list? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. The second meeting uh, that we had this month was on uh, April 11th. And we dealt with two issues. Uh, one was the review of the quarterly report, which deals with the revenue, uh, year to date on the revenues and expenses compared to year, year to date in budget. Um, Shane, I'm sorry, Mr. Pepe and Mrs. Snyder went through the uh, 
the list for us and answered all our questions to our satisfaction. One item did bear uh, a great deal of discussion. It was an item that was brought up earlier in the meeting, and it has to do with unbudgeted health care for individuals who retire. Uh, during the compilation of the budget this year, we did not put anything in the budget uh, because we don't know when someone's going to retire. Uh, we're not allowed to ask them their retirement date. And as a result, you heard earlier, it looks like we're going to have uh, three or four uh, individuals who will be retiring and we will have to pay for their, contractually pay for their uh, health care insurance in addition to the people that we bring on board also. So that's just a, a heads up for, uh, for council that we will most probably have negative variances uh, for the residual of the year unless we offset those uh, uh, with other uh, expense reductions. The second uh, part of the discussion had to do with the uh, identification of, for a five-year plan. Quite frankly, Mr. Pepe has uh, moved us down the road of uh, maturity of budget projections uh, since coming aboard. Um, he and, and the committee have committed to getting uh, even more meat on the bones as far as a uh, five-year projection uh, so that there aren't as many uh, surprises at the time of uh, budget compilation. And this would be an excellent way in which to notify department directors of when the major purchases would be, uh, be occurring over the, uh, most likely occurring over the course of uh, five years. So it was a good discussion and we agreed uh, after, at the end of the meeting to uh, have the committee members start working on the operations budget for the next five years and we'll be discussing that at the next meeting. Any questions concerning any of that? Hearing none, I'd uh, say that our next uh, meeting is scheduled for uh, May 6 at 6.45 p.m. I report progress. Thank you. Community Relations, Planning, and Development. Chairwoman McManaman. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have nothing for official action this evening. Our next meeting is this week, Thursday, April 18th, in Council Chambers. I report progress. Thank you. Uh, we have no junior council members report tonight. You have three board and commission minute meeting uh, um, minutes there. Personal appeals part two. Does anybody have a personal appeal? Hearing none, Bro manager's report. Um, so you had the pleasure of meeting uh, the two part-time police officers that we hired uh, this past week, um, uh, Officer Troy uh, Leonard. Uh, and Officer Justin Williams. So uh, congratulations to both individuals. Um, the other thing that we did was uh, we hired uh, several auxiliary police officers. Uh, Brett Hampshire uh, and Alfred Kloss uh, will both be um, serving as auxiliary police officers. You see uh, on the memorandum I gave you what the starting rates for each of the officers would be. Part-time officer uh, will be paid at $22 per hour. The auxiliary police officers, uh, we will start at $15 per hour, and then you see the progression of uh, wages for them. Uh, it's been quite some time since we've hired either part-time or auxiliary. Um, so uh, we did create a wage scale for the auxiliary. We believe that the part-time officer is the rate that a part-time officer should be. Um, so we, we set it at where the other part-time officers are. Uh, if you have any questions regarding that, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will also report um, that our animal control officer, Ruth Ann Phillips, has resigned her position. Uh, you see her letter of resignation um, under my section in the iPads. Um, she had served as our animal control officer uh, for a little less than a year. Um, actually, a lot less than a year. Mm -hmm. um, probably about four or five months. Um, and uh, we will be on the uh, hunt for another animal control officer. Um, so, uh, you know, any council members that might be leaving at the end of the year, if you want to be an animal control officer. Sure, I'll uh, apply. We, we have an opening. <laughs> Why um, not? If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, uh, I will report progress. <laughs> Don't look at it. staring right at me. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> President's business, I have nothing. Uh, motion to adjourn. Councilman Dufresne, second by Councilman Hart. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Meeting adjourned at 745. Go Phillies.